Hey Indie Mogulers, welcome to Friday 101. Today we'll be going over seven things that you should know about making short films, and I should say up front that this list involves topics that are specific to short films. In doing some research, I found a lot of people who gave advice online under a heading like tips on how to make a short film, and really it was just a list of what to do when making any film, no matter how long. Things like be prepared, write an outline before scripting, storyboard your shots, cast the right actors, which, yeah, no shit. This is about short films, and in quite a few ways they are their own thing. Many great directors have started out making short films that caught the attention of someone important. Steven Spielberg made Amblin, Oliver Stone made Last Year in Vietnam, Martin Scorsese made one of my favorite short films that they had us watch at film school, The Big Shave. I'll be linking to that one at the end for sure. Even more recently, filmmakers like Jared Hess or James Wan made their careers by taking a short film and then expanding them into features after getting noticed with the short. More on that later, but that's actually why I'm doing this topic today, as I myself am planning on making a short with the hopes that I'll be able to move that idea forward towards a feature. The following is a list of what I consider to be important as I move ahead with my short film. They're not rules, remember that, I hate rules. Rules stifle creativity. Anytime someone says to follow a rule in filmmaking, treat it as more of a flexible guideline that will be right almost all the time, but don't be afraid to think differently if your own creative mind pulls you in the opposite direction. Short version, you don't have to agree with me, and if you don't, or if you have something additional to add that I don't cover in this video, then leave a comment below with your own thoughts on the subject. Now, first things first, let's start out simple. What qualifies as a short film? According to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, a short film is defined as having a running time of 40 minutes or less, including credits. See, easy start, but before you run out and make your 40 minute long film, pause, take a breath, and listen to thing number two. The best length for a short film, assuming you wanna actually do something with it besides a public exhibition at your house with your friends and family, is at most 10 to 15 minutes. With 15 minutes being the number you shouldn't go over if you can help it, and 10 or less being optimal. This is due to how film festivals generally schedule things. They like the showtime hours to look neat and tend to round off to the nearest hour or half hour. So if they have a two hour block, say 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and the feature length they'll be showing is an hour and 40 minutes, they'll usually use that extra 20 minutes to show a few short films, and having something that more easily fits their scheduling plans can increase your odds of being chosen, if only because it came down to your movie or a movie that would throw everything off. So no longer than 15, but best to keep it under 10. Got that? Good. And now that you know to keep it short, equally important is to keep it simple, which brings us to number three. Efficient exposition. Or to oversimplify, explain the important stuff quick. This is the tricky part about short films. It's the part of any story that takes time to explain the backstory or any information that is needed to fully understand what you're watching. When doing a short film, overwrought exposition is something you want to avoid more than anything, and a lot of inexperienced filmmakers make this mistake by throwing in too much expositional dialogue to get things across about the characters that they don't feel the short film medium is allowing them the time in which to do so. But it can be done, it just takes practice, like anything. And with short films, the more you can say about the story without actually having to say it, the better it will generally be, due to the lack of time that you have. For example, if you have a short action movie, don't just have characters talk at length about how tough a character is, just be sure to effectively get that across when the time comes to use that toughness. Then the audience knows just by seeing and doesn't need that extra 30 to 60 seconds eaten up to literally tell them that. Want to get better at short film exposition? Make a movie with no dialogue and keep it under 10 minutes. Get good at telling a story that way and your work will more than likely improve. Remember that, never say what you can show. For some of the best examples I've seen on how to pull off quick exposition in a short film, I'm gonna be linking at the end to the BMW film series, which came out a little over 10 years ago, all under 10 minutes, each one done by a different major film director who each had their own way of doing things. It's an excellent series if you wanna know how that's done. All right, that was a long one. Let's get to number four. Short films can be used to jumpstart a feature. Say you've got a feature length script, or at the very least, a rough idea for one. And the idea, while not a huge studio epic, would still take more resources than you can currently gather at the moment. One of the best things that you can do to get it off the ground is to take a scene from the feature that works on its own and gives a good idea of what a longer project would be about and shoot that scene as a short film. Take some of the names I mentioned earlier. James Wan, along with Lee Whannell, the creative team behind the Saw franchise, had their idea ready, but no funding. They made a seven minute short film that essentially became the head trap scene that opened the feature and used that to entice investors. Or instead of a scene, you can use a short to showcase 
showcase a character and or a setting. Like when Jared Hess made a nine minute black and white short film called Palooka, which was about a character named Seth, which was changed for the feature when the character, still played by John Heater, became Napoleon Dynamite. A well done short film done in this vein can be enough for an investor as it says, yes, we have a good idea and yes, we know what we're doing. That's something that's generally pretty important. You can also use short films as an opportunity to test and practice techniques you haven't yet mastered. This happens on YouTube a lot, as you'll find a lot of videos that are short on story, if they have one at all, but heavy on things like special effects or camera tricks. This is a good idea, and while they may not be film festival material, they may at least be eligible for various video contests. Which brings us to short film contests can make you money. This is hardly news to those of you who watch Indie Mogul regularly, as we talk about this a lot, and Griffin often links to the latest update from OnlineVideoContest.com at the end of Indie News each week. So I won't go on and on about it, I just felt that it should be on this list, Though I will say, we have a video that is being shown on Mogul or Made in the next week or two, a PSA about wearing a helmet when riding a bike that's only a few minutes long, and was made by a relatively new 14-year-old filmmaker who won $2,500 with it. Don't you want $2,500? Or any dollars, really? So be sure to check out online video contests if you haven't already. Finally, thing number seven, something that may sound pretty ambitious, but really it seems like something that should be a bigger deal. If you want to make a short film that can be considered for an Academy Award nomination, either as a short narrative, documentary, or animated film, there are a select number of film festivals that can give you a chance to qualify. And those lists are right down there in the description of this video. And I bring this up because, especially in this day and age, it really surprises me that we don't make a bigger deal out of those awards. They're on the main Oscars show. The people who get nominated get to go to these shows and be a part of a big Hollywood Awards shindig, and they get their time on highly rated national TV. With YouTube and various other short film outlets, someone should really start a push to make these a bigger deal. Like when people watch college sports and talk about the young guys and who should get drafted when they're ready to move on to the pros. Or when a wrestler wins the Intercontinental title, and you know that that's just a stepping stone to eventually pushing the guy to the main event. Just like you know current IC champ Wade Barrett is going to be one day. I, uh, I just came out as a wrestling fan. So, as if you haven't heard it enough, I will be making a short film of my own in the coming months that I hope to turn into a feature in some way later on in the year. As I get further into the process, we'll have a few more educational-ish episodes about the various stages along the way, along with some behind-the-scenes episodes instead of your average Friday 101. Those should be fun. But we're still a month or so away from the start of that. In the meantime, send me your filmmaking questions. I don't know if I'll still be doing as many Friday 101 mailbags as usual in the coming year once everything gets started, so I want to get it out of the way maybe even two of them in a row, before the bigger stuff starts. Send your questions as usual to friday101mail at gmail.com or, and this is even better as far as I'm concerned, follow me on Twitter at Russell Rules and tweet me your questions with the hashtag Friday101Mailbag. I might even do a whole Twitter edition of the mailbag if I get enough questions that way. So that is it for me this week. See you all next week. And about that whole wrestling fan thing, that's just... It's... <laughs> Ah, uh, who am I kidding? Hell, I'm going to WrestleMania 29 in two months, and I can't f***ing wait. And while I'm on the subject, what happened to CM Punk at the Royal Rumble last week was a damn travesty.